like in your experience, what are sort of some of the hidden determinants when it comes to contribute to uh, athletic excellence? Well, the 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 biggest one is, and you know, when I, I did my master's degree in this area, and when I when I um, did my thesis, my dissertation, what I did is I I set the the, the bar high in terms of who I was going to interview, and so I had to have won um, at Olympic medal level or um, national championships or international world championships, those sorts of things. That was the level I, I interviewed people at, um, and you know, from that, from that, those interviews and all the research I did as part of that dissertation is um, the one thing that stood out the most is um, the great what what we term as the great I am. So, um, maturing or growing yourself, and that's essentially raising consciousness. Have you seen people shift, and 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 if so, what are some effective ways to sort of open? open leaders up that you're working with or open open the mind open the mind of conversation up with the athlete that you're working with that perhaps is a bit bit closed and is just doing the same thing that they've always done how do you what are some effective ways to well you know message across i guess as simple as it sounds um the most effective way is to keep learning to keep studying and that, and have mentors and those are those all sounds like simple things but um uh, you know, an example would be, and I, I've said this, I'm going back 20 years now, right? I said, put a library into your, into your sports organisations, you know? Um, put books in there that players can sit down when they're having their lunch and start to read. Um, put them on, like I, I was doing, for example, we got we, we were on the road, we'd have a lot of time. Players have a lot of time to themselves. You know, they sit in hotel rooms, they don't really have a lot to do watching movies or be on video games and stuff like that so what i started doing is say okay we're going to have we're going to have learning sessions what would be some of those sort of key principles do you think that athletes need to start uh, adopting to, to be an effective leader well you see i was working um doing some work at the at the time we used to have a, a high performance center in new zealand rugby um based i was still in the army at the time but they were bringing me in every now and again just to help out and we would run the national age group teams through there. And um, it was interesting because at that time, Dan Carter was coming through the under 21 system. Dan Carter was obviously one of the most famous All Blacks we've had in recent times. And you saw the difference of the individuals coming from Canterbury versus other parts of the country. Because what they were doing is they, they were developing human, human beings. They were developing, pe developing people. And that's what we'd done in the military, right? So I was interviewed um, for the All Black role in 2004. And one of the things I said then is I said, better people make better rugby players. Or, or, or you can say it another way, better people will make better coaches. They'll make better sports people. And what about developing mm -hmm. um, resilient athletes? Like how does that come into a crucial role for when you're a strength and initiative coach at a, at a club? Um, how do you assist athletes in developing resilience, both physically but also yeah, mental robustness as well. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff out there on that stuff, you know. And I, I, I mean, the the high performance space has been so much research and um, you know advancements in these areas. But I go back to the basics. I always go back to the foundations. And the first one is you've got to develop well-rounded people, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, there's a lot of stuff out there now about mental health and things like that. When you develop good um, strong people, well-rounded people. Um, that's a that's a first part of developing good resilience. Because life is tough. Life, sports tough. You know, there's, it, 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 you can't shortcut these things. You know, you're going to learn some hard lessons. You're going to hear some hard truths. That you're just not going to like. Once you've educated yourself and and you're building up that knowledge every day, do you find that your, your sort of gut instinct in the fly moments are stronger, like being able to back your intuition? Um, the yeah. and the research on that is um, there's about around the 23 year mark in your in working in your industry you become very intuitive it's, it, I mean you can develop it throughout that time of course right but um, you start picking up subtle signals and the, the, the research they looked at this is firefighters and stuff like that and said why did you make that decision when you went into the building and they couldn't tell you why they made it at the time they had to sit back and reflect 
and then they go through. And it was years and years and years of just picking up subtle clues. You do that with athletes as well. You do that on the pitch, you know, absolutely world-class coaches. This, this, I'm talking about level four, level five coaches and leaders now. World-class people pick up these subtle clues and they make decisions which level one, level two, level three coaches yeah. and leaders can't, can't understand. 